Hello YouTube. Okay, we've got a 1986 TRX 250R. And after recently purchasing a pipe and a bigger carburetor, so it allows me to have some room down the road when I have some more money to build the motor later, I went from the stock, which I believe was the 34 millimeter, to a PWK 39 millimeter, which is great, except for the fact that you now have to be able to adapt it from the carb to the boot. That being said, uh, upon first glance, uh, you'll notice that, uh, well, it fits now. And let me tell you how I did it, because I searched all over the internet, I searched over eBay, I searched and searched and searched, and I looked for different intake tubes, and there are some, there are some airbox eliminator delete kits but i wanted to keep the airbox uh, i don't plan on doing mud bogs with it but i do plan to take it to the track hopefully here soon do it in the vintage class and uh although i will be running with an open lid i didn't want the backside to be open and and the tires flinging mud and debris right onto my k&n um so i went with the cf i think it was a cfm and it pretty much just looks better than what's left of, you know, my stock. The stock's fine. The stock will work. They both run a four-inch air filter. So the same K&N that I bought for this original box is the same one that fits on the new aftermarket. The other, the aftermarket just looks cleaner and it doesn't have the side air ram on it. Uh, although it doesn't have a lid, which so when you go to wash it, you know, not that you wouldn't be cleaning your filter anyways, but if you want to put that off to later and whatever. Anywho, so uh, the big trick after beating my head against the wall, heat gun. There is your magical friend right here. This baby. Um, you'll read in the forum posts and everything about boiling water and this and that. No, heat gun. I tried the boiling water. I don't know if it was it just didn't get it hot enough or what the deal, but at the end of the day, um, the heat gun. I started out on low. It takes a little bit, and grab yourself a pair of gloves. You're going to need them because that tube's going to be hot. You're not going to be able to put it on there barehanded. Um, I heated it up. I went to fit it a couple different times, and... I, you really got to get it so it's super soft. I mean, you don't want to melt it down, but you got to get it soft. And towards the end, I kicked it on high, and then I just kept rotating it and rotating it um, inside, outside to get it good and hot. And once you have it good and hot, you will get that boot on. And it stretches over, and I don't even have the clamp tightened. I couldn't find a longer screw at the current moment. But it's not going anywhere. Um, and that's it. Nothing fits as good as OEM. Um there is an aftermarket uh, intake boot going into the manifold. Um, I think, every, well, there's only one. But that being said, knowing what I know now, uh, they do make the OEM one. And it's been brought to my attention that the aftermarkets may not seal as well. So that being said... For 30 or 40 bucks, about half the cost of the aftermarket, you can stretch those to fit as well, too, because you're going to have the same problem on both sides going from a 34 to a 39. Um, so that's the big trick heat gun. And uh, I tell you, I wasn't a believer till now, and I could have saved myself uh, a lot of time and trouble had I seen a video or somebody doing something of like this about just stretching that out and it works it works like a charm um so i have an 86 uh 86 87 i do believe were the same 88 89 they had this little uh air air box uh supposed to give you a better volume um at this research says it doesn't matter um i don't have the mounting post on mine for the hole because of the 86 frame and I have a, the later model boot but this three quarter inch well anybody that knows three quarter inch PVC cap it had a it had a little stub right here 
um, a little little bump out, and I just took it to the grinder ever so slightly to, to cut that edge off, so that way when you put the clamp on it, it seals. But you couldn't get kind of hard to do one handed, but you can't get a better fit with this uh, with this, um, and you know I'll hit it with some black paint. But yeah, and that'll seal up your your. Uh, your side hole because at the end of the day from the people I've talked to it doesn't matter it 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 was put there to put more air volume in the box but it doesn't matter uh, if you don't have it great if you do have it and you want to eliminate it there you go that's how you eliminate it or you go out and you find the OEM boot because nobody made I can't say nobody there is one person I ran across that was doing an air box combo setup but unless you, I mean, I'd already bought my air box. And so I didn't want to go out and buy another one. Um, considering I just spent 150 on one. And, you know, it was going to be running about 300 bucks for the other setup. And it was limited production. So I just wanted to keep the k and I had that came out of my stock box. Adapt it to my CFM. Because they're both a 4 inch. And marry it up. Uh to the bike and that's that's what i found now i will say this the um i don't have the new oem intake manifold boot uh i've read that the distance can be a little bit short when you go from the air box and you put it on the thing and and that you know it's kind of taut here and i don't know maybe it wants to pull off um, using the aftermarket boot, there seemed to be plenty of room. So, anywho, that's what I got. All right, bye.